Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamerica.com here today with a quick tip explainer on Coros's new training load and recovery bits that they just launched for the Coros Pace 2, Apex, Apex Pro, and Vertex watches. Now, technically speaking, this is a bit of a beta release of sorts, so go ahead and sign up for it and get enrolled into a beta, and then they'll release sometime next month or so in full production. But things should be pretty similar to what we see today. Now, I'm just going to simply walk you through it using the app on my phone, though you do see some of these exact same metrics on the watch itself, but it's a little easier to show you on the app on my phone. And there's essentially two parts to this. There's a training load part, and there's a running kind of metrics focused area part. Uh, but they are very, very dependent on the running side of it. Also, sorry for any cars going by. I'm stuck at home with a kid today. So having to do this in the backyard as opposed to in a fancy studio that's nice and kind of sound control. Also, sorry for the airplanes above. I live underneath the flight path. Oh, and as usual, this video isn't sponsored by anyone or anything. Just me talking to myself in the garden. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the training load piece. And this is individual workout based, and then from there it expands into kind of longer duration training load, seven day onto six week, and then from there. Uh, the first thing is to look at a workout that I completed. In this case, this is a couple weeks ago, uh, Farms and Rivers, just simply me out for just shy of an hour long workout. I did kind of steady state for the first half and then a bunch of 400 meter repeats after there until the completion of the workout. Uh, and the main thing you wanna focus on is the training load shown there on the right hand side towards the bottom of 233. That's based on heart rate, uh, and essentially the higher the heart rate zone, the more points towards that load you get. It's a complete trim-based system, T-R-I-M-P, uh, very common across the board for training load recovery metrics. So it's a good example of how these things balance out. I had a workout last week that was just 30 minutes of quick intervals that I had. Uh, that had the same score as a 55 minute workout that was a bit more steady state, almost exactly the same score within one unit. Uh, so you can see how different intensities impact the training load. Then at the bottom of the screen there, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see how the training effect uh, and the training focus area. This was a threshold run uh, because of those 400 meter repeats. And then I have the aerobic and anaerobic sections broken out listed there. What I want to do now is jump over to the overall training load uh, over my entire account. So we'll go back and then to the right there. And the third from the bottom tab uh, is my entire account of profile. And you can see at the top there, I've got the running metrics and then I've got fatigue in that middle section. And the bottom kind of, I have the seven day training load. Uh, and you'll see my seven day training load over time uh, is plotted against the recommended. And the recommended is this range that it uses uh, all of your historical data up to about 42 days back. Uh, and so you've got this kind of long longer duration that you're looking at uh, for whether or not something is safe and you're basically trying to prevent injury here. Uh, and you can see my current seven day load at 830 units uh, and the recommended range is 442 to 761. And that's, I'm slightly above today's because I just finished a 90 minute threshold workout, uh, which popped up that load considerably more than it would probably normally be. I can then tap this and it's gonna rotate my screen uh, and I'll see the seven day load over time on a longer graph. I can also drop down there uh, and look at the four week intensity distribution to see how those workouts are from an intensity standpoint, uh, I can change the graph again to base fitness uh, and see it that way. And now that swapping back and forth of horizontal to vertical is something that's a real pain in the butt because every time I want to look at a metric, it goes and switches back to this. So it's like, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I talked to Chorus about that and they did say that's gonna change down the road here, uh, but not at this point. So for right now it is kind of what it is. Now, before we go too far into this, there's a really important thing to understand here, which is the base or initial requirement of 150 minutes of running time, uh, along with seven days uh, from your first run until now. Uh, and the 150 minutes is way more nuanced than just running 150 minutes. In particular, they need 150 minutes of flat ground on pavement, so not trail, but on pavement, uh, flat as I mentioned, uh, and above a certain heart rate, which if you're running, will be above the heart rate, doesn't really matter, uh, but not interval training. So it can't be interval workouts. Uh, and so if you have like a regular weekly diet of, you know, interval workouts, maybe a tempo run and uh, maybe some trail running, something like that, that's probably not going to qualify. You're actually going to have to put a fair bit of running time at steady state intensity on flat roads uh, in order to be able to qualify. With that, uh, another airplane. And just to put a finer point on it, the run has to be specified in the run profile or the track run profile. So if you are in trail run or any other profiles other than those two, run and track run, uh, and you don't have 150 minutes and the seven days of uh, workouts, then 
you won't get any of this data. And it's a pretty big gap right now in the lineup. Uh, and there's also no way of knowing what counts as an eligible minute. Uh, so you may go out and run a bunch of you know, flat ground, but if it doesn't count as an eligible minute according to their algorithm, then it doesn't count. And you just have to keep on running until you hopefully get it. So cyclists, this, this definitely isn't for you, unfortunately, at least not at this point in time. Oh, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out the video and the channel quite a bit. So assuming you got all that out of the way, uh, the next piece you'll see there is that middle section where it says fatigue, uh, base fitness, and load impact. Fatigue is a score from zero to 100. Uh, zero means that you are like totally ready to go. Uh, 100 means that you are definitely not ready to go. So you can see I'm crept a little bit higher at 67. I was a bit lower in the day before the train ride. A uh, base fitness is a look at your average six week time frame. Uh, so what is kind of your base overall uh, fitness level? Of course, that over that average six week time frame. And then load impact is the impact of the load of the last seven days of training. Uh, so essentially, if you have a higher load, it's gonna be more impactful. If you have a lower load, it's gonna be less impactful. Now then at the top, there is the running metrics. Now these are slightly different than the base requirements of the other ones. And that these ones you have to keep on running to get, which obviously makes sense. Uh, but you know, even for a cyclist, if you do fulfill the 150 minutes of initial time, then you will get training load down below and fatigue and base fitness and all the kind of stuff, uh, but you won't get to these running metrics updated. So for example, my trainer ride that I just finished uh, a little bit ago, that didn't change any of the top metrics up there in terms of marathon levels or VO2 max because the VO2 max is only running based. Uh, so you see at the top there, marathon level 66.3. Uh, so Coros has bucketized these uh, into different levels. And if I pull this up right here, you can see uh, there is beginner zero to 40. So complete a full marathon in uh, over five hours. 41 to 60 is a full marathon between four and five hours. Uh, 61 to 70, a full marathon between 3.5 and 4 hours, uh, and then advanced 71 to 80 3, to 3.5 hours, and then this very broad bucket of elite at 81 to 100 from 2 to 3 hours. And uh, if you've run a sub 3 hour marathon, you'll know that there is a huge difference between doing a 255 and doing a, a 320 or 330 or even a 340. Uh, so I'd say that's a bit of a kind of weird bucket in my brain, but um, that's just me. Uh, so right now I have not done a lot of running focused workouts. I'm mostly on the bike recently. So my marathon level is showing a bit higher than it probably normally would at 66 or a bit lower, I guess you could say, than it normally would. How do you want to phrase that slower than it normally would? Uh, and that's likely because the VO2 max score right here is a bit lower than I'm seeing across all my other devices. So it shows 51 right there. I'm seeing pretty consistently 56, 57 on all my other watches from other companies. Uh, and then you see running performance there is 100%. It's good. Uh, so that means I'm right where I should be. I'm not training too hard or too little on the running side. Uh, and then you have got threshold pace and threshold heart rate uh, from before. And if we switch back to the per workout mode and again, scroll all the way to the bottom right there, out at the top first, you'll see that running performance listed there as well for that particular workout. And if we scroll back down to the bottom, as I showed you earlier, it shows the training focus. That's just for running. You don't see that for cycling workouts. So you see right there, uh, threshold, the aerobic and the anaerobic pieces are there for all your workouts, uh, but that training focus is only there for the running workouts. Now, a few other things to note real quick here is that one, there's no dependency on pace or on uh, power for any of these metrics. So uh, unlike something like TSS, which can be based on power or pace or uh, average graded pace, uh, there's none of that here at all. It is purely based on your heart rate zones only for everything that we've talked about. Uh, and maybe that's something will change on the road. You'll see Garmin, for example, uh, and others will go ahead and utilize things Things like altitude and elevation, ascent to descent, uh, where you are from an altitude standpoint at all. So if you're up higher, uh, that'll impact your training load and recovery more than this. Uh, but in this case, it just assumes flat ground for everything and assumes flat just running basically, um, which is, I think, one of the challenges is that at this point, you know, Coros has really focused themselves on being uh, a trail runners watch. Uh, that's where a lot of the marketing has been spent, a lot of their ambassadorships, sponsorships, and influencers, and all that kind of stuff is trail running. Uh, and None of this works on trail running uh, at all. It, it's all flat running only and focused on flat running only. And so that is something that I think uh, is a bit of a challenge right now compared to all their competitors supporting their, at least not all of them, I guess most of their competitors. Uh, for example, Wahoo doesn't have any of the training load metrics at all. So that's an example where they have something that uh, Wahoo doesn't. Still, it is a good start. And ultimately, Chorus has to start somewhere in order to kind of get into this whole game. Uh, and they've had a little bits here and there in the past, but this is sort of like diving into it uh, holistically. And then hopefully over over time, we'll see them iterate and add more pieces that uh, aren't necessarily focused on just flat land running. Now, before we finish up, I've got one more interesting thing here. Let me grab it. Uh, so this is something Chorus also announced today. And 
honestly, I'm probably just as excited about this than anything else. Uh, so this here, let me just stop this whole screen recording thing. There we go, stop. Okay, so this here is a keychain charger and look how cool this is. So this pops off, this goes on your keychain. Uh, so it's like this, pops off, I'll put some close-up shots. Uh, and then this goes into your computer and then this goes on to the back of the watch. It just snaps in there. It's actually a little bit better snap than the usual Coros uh, cable is. So you can see I can hold it like this and I mean, I can't like swing it around too much. Um, but well, I guess I can a little bit. Um, point is, this then puts back itself back in place there, uh, and you have this on your keychain, so you always have your charger with you when you travel. Uh, it's a really cool thing. And for those that have been following a long time, you'll know that I've got like a bit of a charging watch charging fetish. I'm always looking for creative ways to charge your watches, and this is really cool. Uh, it's a little pricey. It's a little bit pricey, and it's only like limited quantity all that kind of stuff but i love this i'd love to see this be like the stock charger in a Coros watch how cool would that be like that would be like setting the uh uniqueness bar a bit uh so anyways that's available starting now uh, i'm gonna buy one i love this little thing so with that hopefully you found this interesting if so go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness with that have a good one